Why would I swap cases with you? I got multiple calls that a guy in the Sackett Towers is dealing meth out of his apartment. It's a guaranteed arrest. And therefore, we'll have a ton of paperwork, which I know you hate. I have a murder here with no leads and no evidence. It's unsolvable, and thus shall have no paperwork. You had me at no paperwork. That was the very end of the sentence. Four, coming in. Oh, come on. I was in the crime scene. This guy comes up out of nowhere, confesses. Well, he says he's got to make things right, so he helps me track down his accomplices. That is so great, man. Looks like everything's coming up Hitchcock. Any progress with that extortion case you and Jake have been working on? No, I've just been going over his notes. Look how cool and illegible his handwriting is. Oh, I wish I could be that free. But you know me, ever the calligrapher. Yeah, well, um... I thought you might need a little more manpower. OK. So I'm assigning you a new partner. Actually, partners. Yeah, there's definitely something in there. Looks like a peanut. Bet it's a cashew. You're on. No, Sarge, come on. They're terrible. Stop exaggerating, Boyle. They're good detectives. They're fine. Oh, no. I pushed it in deeper. They're all we got. So those threatening phone calls were being made to Tim Orsk of Timo's Limos. It's interesting. This Orsk guy's name keeps cropping up in this case. Because he's the victim. You know, he's the guy whose window was smashed with this rock, OK? He's being extorted for $10,000. Sure, but what do they want from him? $10,000, I just said that. We're trying to figure out who's doing the threatening. Wait, I have a theory. I think limousine and magazine come from the same word. Just focus! I'm sorry for snapping. I interviewed Orsk. Orsk, there it is again. Oh, you're useless. You're completely useless. You are, without a doubt, the most incompetent detectives I've ever seen. And I'm including that bomb-sniffing dog who humps all the bombs. Hey, Boyle, guess who got the Timo's limos perp? <sighs> Jake. Is Jake back? Oh, we did. Scully and Hitchcock. Signed confession. You called us useless. You called us incompetent. You called us zeros in the sack. Never happened. Well, someone said it to me last night. No, oh, oh, must have been my wife. How did you solve the case? We listened to those voicemails again and noticed the sound of parrots in the background. Got a list of employees, did door duty, asking neighbors if any of them kept pet birds. We finally found one who did, and guess what? The landscaping in front of his building was covered with these. Same type of rock that was thrown through the window. I can't believe it. What, you don't think it can break one? Watch. I meant I can't believe you solved the case. Well, you're wrong on that, too. Hey, I double-checked your evidence. Everything looks good. Huh. I gotta say, you guys are good cops. Yeah, no doy. How do you think we got to be the oldest guys here? By never being promoted and losing all your money to divorces. And bad investments. Anyway, I'm sorry for calling you useless. I'm gonna make sure everyone knows you did good. Boy, please don't. Don't. The last thing we need is to suddenly be on everyone's A-list. The ones to watch, the golden boys, a pair of red-hot dicks. No one calls detectives that anymore. People call detectives that? All that investigating was exhausting. Besides, we did our share of that in the 70s and 80s. Now, we like to do paperwork in our comfy chairs. If we're away from our desks for too long, they'll update our computers and we'll lose Minesweeper. So please, don't tell anyone about the amazing work we did today. I never said amazing. You kind of just did your jobs. There you go. No, really. I mean, you also broke a window. Now you get it. Oh, there's the boss. I ask only one time. Who do you work for? DEA, FBI, police? I'm in the cowboy mafia. I work for the Dallas Buyers Club. I came up with that name. No, you didn't. It's a movie about AIDS. You're lying. Let's try again. FBI, oh. DEA, hey. police. Oh, no, he's not going to last. Oh, Jake, you got to do something. I don't want to marry Hitchcock's wife. Here we come, Chickpea. Hey, 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 easy. Out of there. I'd really appreciate it kindly if y'all would stop punching my associate, Reno, there. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alamo. This here's Tex, and this is... Fred. Just Fred. And we are... The Dallas Buyers Club. OK, we make a deal. Kill over, budale. Sounds good. No, I just told him to surround you. Dag nabbit. Look, 
Sarge. I'm sorry that we're in this mess, but on the bright side, we don't have to deal with some lame oboist. You should be apologizing to Hitchcock and Scully. You took them out of their house mouse comfort zone, and now they might get killed. You really think they're going to kill us? Oh, no, no, I'm starting to panic sweat. Starting to? What have you been doing for the past hour? Normal sweating. Wait a minute. If you get killed, what happens to all your debt? Loophole! Oh, you sweaty chair spinning morons. You're gonna get us out of here. They're not gonna kill you fast, Scully. They're gonna make it real slow. First, they're gonna scalp you, and then they're gonna rip your tongue out. No, oh, that's my cupcake taster. What are you doing? Lay off him. Never. For my plan to work, he's gotta be basting in sweat. Hitchcock, you once told me you could roll that chair anywhere. Think you could take it up those stairs? I once rolled a chair home in a blizzard. So yeah, I can go upstairs. So do it. Oh, he's amazing. He's like a big, lazy Michelle Kwan. But how's he gonna get up the stairs? Jake, he already did. <sighs> okay, it's go time. Help! My man's having a heart attack! Help! Hitchcock, now! <laughs> <laughs> Grab his gun. It's not sticking because I'm so juicy. I told you I knew what I was doing. Black Fred, think quick. No, no, ow, that was a gun, man. Scully, grab that dude's knife and cut us loose. We're gonna get the rest of these guys. It's time for Operation Beans Phase 2, the refrying. There they are. Everybody give it up for Hitchcock and Scully. To thank you for all you did, bringing down a drug ring, we have a little present for you. Brand new, top of the line oh. desk chairs. Extra padding with adjustable height and recline. Hey, chair. Get ready to meet your new best friend. Mm. My ass. Mm. Oh. Oh. That was very nice of you. They did good. Also, I was worried they might want to go out in the field more, and I need something to keep them at their desks. You really think that that is going to keep them at their... And they're both asleep already. And the city's safer for it. Sleep tight, you magnificent oafs. You deserve it. We can keep it in my office until it's time to leave. What do you have in the pastry box, sir? Brownies? No, you hold brownies from the side. He's holding it from the bottom. True. Maybe it's a cheesecake. There's no condensation on the box. It's room temperature. Look at the finger spread, tensing in the shoulders. He's supporting something dense. It's, it's a, a pie. pie. It is a pie. Damn, that was impressive. Right. Bullpen, now. Is everything OK, sir? No, it is not. I went to a meeting, and when I returned, my pie was gone. Which one of you took it? Calm down. There's no need to point fingers at us. It was clearly Hitchcock and Scully. How dare you? You have no proof. There's crumbs all over your desks. Well, these are pie crumbs. Bread, cookie, pizza, sandwich, blintz, and one good old-fashioned potato chip. No pie here. I just humiliated you. I saw what you did this morning when you deduced the contents of my bakery box. Impressive. Now I need to use your skills to find my pie. It's about time you came to us. Here's what we need from you, a list of the pie's ingredients. We're looking for anything that might linger on someone's breath. We need surveillance footage from the water fountain. The crumb consistency was dry. Whoever ate it's going to be thirsty. Now, what kind of crimped edge are we dealing with here, U-shaped or V? I don't know. Well, then get on the damned phone and find out. But who do we know that could find us a random New York hot dog guy? So, you need a little help from the Wiener Warriors. Well, I hate that. Just tell us what you know, please. There's Lou's Dogs. He serves them up real plump. Big Mike's does two dogs per bun. Hank's Frank's great mustard selection. Vicky's vegan. I'd rather eat Charlie does an al dente dog. It's got a really nice chew. Johnny Arkansas serves it Little Rock style, although he can serve it Razorback style. OK, enough, enough. We don't have time for this. Just tell us who has a card at 6th and 11th. Oh, there are no hot dog carts there. What? Never? No way. Not a chance. Zoning issue. Forget about it, Jake. It's hunger time. All right, pretty boy, where is it? Where's what? The secret bathroom. Secret what? Bathroom where? OK, Captain, I'll be right there. Don't lie to us. We've been watching you. At 11.18 a.m., Rosa told you to follow her, and you guys left together. You returned at 11.31 smelling of lavender. And you've been drinking chamomile tea all day long and haven't been to the men's room once. Since when are you two so into being good detectives? Since it came to secret bathrooms. Oh, 
Tell us where it is. We're making progress on your phone. We went to the bar where it was taken. Wait, why are you in handcuffs? Because I've been arrested. What? By who? Hitchcock, baby. I busted his butt for filing a false police report. He broke his phone, but insurance wouldn't reimburse him unless he reported it as stolen. Are you serious? How the hell did you solve this, Hitchcock? Good old-fashioned detective work. Yeah, they have no idea. <laughs> they think the phone was actually stolen. You're under arrest, jerko. Don't even think about it. We thought the bathroom was empty because we used the toilet with our feet up on the stall door. Explain any further and I will kneecap you both. You can't boss me around. I'm the greatest detective in the history of here, Mr. Nine-Nine.